Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and today we're going to be talking about some tips to help you clear the new event in the simulated universe, Gears and Gold or Gold and Gears quicker. And first of all, let's talk about how to unlock the path of erudition, since probably it's the thing that is permanent, that we probably want to use it in the normal simulated universe on a daily basis. I'll be sharing with you some tips on how to clear it faster as well. Personally, for me, I took about the whole day, which is more or less like 11 to 12 hours in total. But uh, tips that I have here for you, I think it will speed it up much quicker to help you clear much, much faster as well. Now, the first tip that I have, I know it's confusing with all these new dice customization, dice face index that you have over here. The first tip is to go into this gold and gears. Over here, you basically have all of these uh, at first blanked out, question mark and stuff like that. The TLDR of how to get the path of erudition is you have to clear the final chapter. But we kind of knew that already, right? I'll teach you how to actually clear it very efficiently. So the first thing that you want to do is go in your normal run, you'll clear the beginning very quickly, and then you will enter this midsection, which is going to take the bulk of your time. Now you're going to do this path, this tree together with something else to get two rewards simultaneously. And let me share with you what it is. If you go into this dice customization thing real quick, um, you see at first you start off with maybe just one dice, and then you have like different ones here and there. Uh, and this corresponds with this gameplay rewards here if you realize you have to use a certain dice to clear the simulated universe once and then thereafter each one has their own difficulty so the trick here is you want to use the dice for the lowest difficulty possible so while you're at the same time you're doing your runs so you have the minimum number of runs you need uh, in in summary you basically need to do three runs here to clear all three three different runs three different runs here three different runs here, three different runs. So you need to have at least 12 different runs in order to get all of these like freebies over here, these stellar jits. And what you're going to do, if you notice here, this has no requirements. So you're going to clear each one on difficulty one. This one here is on difficulty two. So you're going to use these dice on difficulty two, three here and four here to get the max rewards in the minimum amount of time as you can get. So conundrum, we'll talk about it tomorrow or another later date. This video is just for Path of Erudition and how to speed up your run. So that is the first tip that I have. You want to run simultaneously with these paths here. Now, when you first enter in, you see all these like strange paths here, these numbers on top with that bar that goes left and right. Basically, if you go in and you see the path is something that you haven't unlocked yet and you are playing at, for example, if you're in difficulty one now, you're unlocking maybe these three. You want to make sure that your the, the this risk level that you can get is exactly in between. Uh, let me give you an example by going into one run. Now, let's just go for a very simple run here. Real quick, I can show you tapping on erudition here. So, you can deselect like certain paths that you're not interested for. For example, let's just do this. And here's where you select your dice. So, for example, I'm on difficulty one. What I want to do is I want to select the least dice here. As you can see, I clear them all on best record one. If you're on difficulty one, clear each of these once each time and then go on to two. You see here, I did like two, two, two and then three, 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 difficulty three and thereafter, I cleared like these one, four, four, four and then I took this one to five as well. Um, but we we'll talk about that in a bit. So let me just show you one real quick. I'm just going in with this random one. I have tons of tips for you, including like better dice faces. Uh, but let me explain a bit on this. So when you go into every single screen, when you first launch the game, it will show you the path that is being done. So far from my experience, they have always given me a new path that I haven't explored before uh, if, it's, if there's a new path available. But uh, if it doesn't, you can always just restart, exit it out and go into it until you find a good one. This is unlike like the Swarm Disaster where it's completely random and you had kind of to know what is the terminology and stuff. Like whether it's the Lepismat 1, Lepismat 2, 3 and all that stuff. This one, they spell it out for you real quick. So all these numbers at the top, don't worry about it. Let me explain simply for you guys. So now we are entering the first phase here. And you can see they have this recommendation and you want to follow their recommendation because this will help you unlock exactly the story that you need. You need to unlock all the stories in the middle path in order to get Path of Erudition at the end. So you can get these stories by uh, entering this particular domain here. Let me just show you. This ones that has say intra connection, they will give you a choice whether to increase or decrease. So you want to like go according to what you need. And it's important to plan out. So if you know that you're going to need like minus 40 in the last slot, you want to be as negative as you can and so on and so forth. So this bar here is like minus 20 to 20. Minus 40 unlocks later at like higher difficulties. So as plus 40. So that's like the first overall arcing tip on understanding how to do this, uh, managing these bars. 
the next thing that I want to teach you about is what are the shortcuts because that's the most important thing, right? How do we speed up these, these runs? I almost used a profanity right there because it took a lot of time. So how do you actually speed up your runs? Now, let me get back to the screen. I'll share with you some die uh, tips that are super, super important for the faces as well. Let me just get out of here. And we go into dice customization here. So in difficulty one and difficulty two, it's very, very easy for most of us who started in the very beginning. If you find it too difficult uh, already in like difficulty two and so on, you can just adjust accordingly. For me, I found one and two very, very manageable. So I focus on stuff that has movement. You want to move to locations that can get you further so you can clear it faster. So make sure you customize your dice with this like a general observation, Beacon Infinity, these are like super, super strong because it helps you teleport to a different one. So that is like my, the buffs that I took. And this one here, similarly, I go for anything that has like movement, teleportation, that is like super good for me. That is in general. And for number two, same thing. I just go for anything that has some sort of teleport, as you can see. Observation is always in my kit in the earlier floors, so I can clear it much, much faster. For other like stages, that's when it gets a bit more difficult. Uh, once you hit the later game, but once you clear like stage one and stage two, your neural network here, sorry, that's one's in a bit, your gold and gears here, you will have mostly done like the middle section here. The only thing you probably would not have done is the, some of them require you to clear at difficulty three and difficulty four. So by the time you finish the six runs, right, because you need to complete this uh, gameplay rewards, this three plus this three, six times, if you did it according to what we recommend, you will have completed six of these paths completely already. So you have, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, meaning you only just need one, two runs, and then on the top, three, four runs. So you just need another four runs to complete the entire middle section. And you need to clear like some in difficulty three, some in difficulty four. So same thing for your difficulty three and four, make sure you go into your dice customization Go into this third section here for knowledge. Clear everything on difficulty three as you can. Personally, my recommendation is to use a path that uh, like nihility is very strong. Remembrance is also pretty good. For me, I used um, more, how, what did I use for this one? I think I mainly played with like a Ron May team just for, for demonstration first. But I think nihility out of all of them is definitely the best. It has offensive ability, it has defensive ability, but we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit too. So once you complete like three, four, all done, um, you will unlock this last part here, this Aeon Secrets. And they unlock after a certain set number of periods. For example, like if you need to clear the second stage to unlock this, to clear the third stage, you will do it while you are clearing your remaining difficulty four, remaining difficulty three runs. So everything is very, very smooth. If you follow this sequential method that I'm te teaching you how to do, you will eventually get like, all of them. And then the last chapter will appear, which is like another quest on its own that is outside of like difficulty four, difficulty five to clear the last one. For me personally, I cleared difficulty five before my this one was unlocked because I was like super inefficient. I didn't know all these tips. But I think from how it sounds, you only need to clear difficulty four. And once you get all of these stories, the final chapter will automatically unlock. So you don't exactly have to clear uh, this torturous difficulty. That is what I think. And of course, I just cleared it. So I haven't done all these conundrums. I wanted to make a video out for you guys first. Um, but yeah, that's how it's done. My team that I use, for any of you wondering, that I cleared the final one was a Nihility team composition. So I use like a Kafka, a Himiko, Fu Xuan for sustain, and I use a Huo Huo. But you can of course use other characters based on your own team composition. Um, if you don't have so many 5 stars, my best tip for you if you're finding difficulty is always, once you for example feel that you can't clear difficulty 3, can't clear difficulty 4, what you can do here is unlock more of this uh, neural network. As you can see, I don't even have it fully unlocked, but we can already push very far. So if you're like a free-to-play player using like four-star characters, you want to try to get as much of these buffs because they are all stacking on top of each other. So like for example, like you get additional 5 HP, get a little bit more attack, get a little bit more defense for your damage reduction. To, it all adds up over time. So that is like so far the tips that I have. We talked about dice customization on how do you make sure you get it the fastest. We talked about the uh, exploration. I think the last thing I want to talk about is like buffs when you're using the path of Hility because certain things are much easier to use and path of Hility is like super efficient. So for that, I need to go into this final part here, which is Simulator Universe. I think it's the database, Ability Tree. Not this one, Index. Blessings here. Path of Nihility. 
So I'm sure a lot of you might be familiar with this one already, but Nihility is very strong is because they are not only offensive, they are also defensive at the same time. Stuff that I always look out for for my Nihility runs is this one here, which is... This one here is like super good. Call of the Wilderness is SS tier. This is really, really strong because you can stack up to 99 easily and then you get like a max of 30% uh, attack reduction on an enemy. Super strong. This is always a must. It makes the fight a lot easier. And the other one is that heal one. Let me see where it is. There's a, when you proc a DOT, you heal a bit. And they're all very easy to find. Like uh, this one here. So wherever you proc, proc a DOT, you heal a bit. Super good in sustain. Helps you top your team up even more. And this one here before sunrise is also super OP because you help like regenerate all your energy of your whole team. So these two are like super critical. SS tier and they are all one stars. One star, two stars. Very easily obtainable for Path of Nihility. Other than that, um, these are okay. Like the three stars ones are nice to have. They are not really a necessary thing but you just want to get one that has apply suspicion. This helps you build stacks quicker. And between like the three here that I focus on, I usually take the... Where's that one? This one here to help it prop faster. This uh, resonance formation outsider. And then I'll usually go for this one here, suffering and sunshine. This is the lowest priority, the doubtful four foot road. And I think after you're done with that, more or less is like an easy GG for this one. So yeah, that is basically a quick TLDR of my summary of go and gears. I took about 12 hours, but I think with these tips, if you only go in, for example, 12 times, you will likely clear it a lot faster than me. I think I did it over like 20. 30 times without knowing all these tactics that I, I have to share. But anyways, that is my tip of how to unlock Path of Erudition. And for those of you who didn't catch that, you unlock Path of the Erudition by completing every single one of these, completing the final chapter as well. I don't think you need to clear difficulty 5, but I did when I unlocked it. Uh, but in my opinion, you just need to clear all these and unlock the final story as well. This will come out a new uh, mode on its own. When you click like Start Exploring, it will only show you like just a story difficulty and none of these. So yeah, hope it helps. And anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more of such future content. We'll make another one for the conundrum levels in a little bit. But anyways, I'll see you in the next video.